Hello and welcome to my podcast. It is 10.13 p.m. at night and Friday and I forgot to do my podcast and I'm trying to stay consistent and do Monday through Friday. I did take a break on vacation. I took a week off because the Wi-Fi and everything was jacked up. Anyways, so it is August 3rd and we are in full swing of college soccer and we started an academy um, at my school where uh, we have um, uh, young players that are um, uh, working with uh, dr- directly with my college team and we are trying to find a way to get kids as technical as possible and it, it is of my opinion the best way to get technical and learn the game and become a great player is you must learn from other players I believe coaches can manage things but they really can't make an impact like players so I have at my school um, well before I go on let me at least let you know who's on our podcast tonight we have Jack Cameron my son this is his second appearance on my podcast and um, Landon uh, is a, a player that plays with Jack on his 2006 uh, Bears FC team. Um, I'll go ahead and introduce them uh, or have them say a little about themselves. So Jack, uh, go ahead and tell the listeners uh, who you are and what do you like about soccer? My name is Jack Cameron and what I like about soccer is how fun you, um, well, it's fun to control the ball and do skills against players and shoot goals. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. And now here's Landon. Landon, uh, uh, it's Landon Vree, right? Mm-hmm. All right, Landon Vree. Um, Landon, tell us uh, uh, who you are and why do you like soccer? My name's Landon Vree. <laughs> and. I love soccer because, like, I get to do all these challenging moves that are really fun for me, and I, I just like the game. Perfect. Well, glad to have Jack and Landon on. It's it's good to talk to them. They're both. Uh, uh, Jack is turning 11 this month, and Landon, when's your birthday? October. October. So they're both turning 11 soon. So they're they're basically they're 11 years old. And they are training now. This is the first week we started it, but they're going to be trained with uh, um, my college kids every week. And their goal, we had a team meeting today uh, with our college team and the uh, uh, Bears Academy and let them know what the, I'm sorry, they're turning 12 years old. Sorry. They're, they're 11 now, but they're turning 12. My fault. And um, uh, we brought the college players together and have them meet um, uh, the little bears and uh, we kind of explain what's going on so it's a big race so we uh, let the parents and the kids know um, we're going to start pairing you up with every player on the the college team and their goal is to learn as much as they can from every player and steal all their information uh, before the next set of players come so if you think about it, if they learn from the 28 players I have now, in every year there's going to be around 15 new players. So during their time frame being part of the Bears Academy, they are going to cycle through potentially 90 to 100 different soccer players with different minds, different thoughts, different cultures. And they're going to learn it all. They're going to steal as much information and somehow make it their own. And uh, in our room, we had three Japanese players, uh, one kid from Ecuador, four kids from Africa, from Cameroon and several other places, uh, New Guinea and another Mbappe, I don't know, Zimbabwe. Uh, then we have um, uh from Arizona, we have kids from Nogales, um, Yuma, and obviously Phoenix and Mexico. And 
even in Arizona, in Yuma, it's a different culture. In, tu- in Tucson, in Nogales, it's a, it's a different cul- culture. They all play in different areas that have its own little uh, niche of soccer. So it's very interesting. So tonight we started it, and um, I'm going to pass the um, uh, mic to uh, Jack, and he's going to tell us which players he worked with and what he, what he learned. Um, the best that he can. So here's Jack. Tell us uh, who you worked with and uh, what did you learn? First, I was with a guy from Ecuador named Ariel. He, um, he what I learned is to control the ball with, with my opposite foot and juggle with it and dribble. Second player I um, learned with was Johnny. And, um, what he did, we did um, cuts and um, swerving the ball to the other side and faking it. And the last one, his name is Kazoo, and um, I learned... Where's Kazoo from? Um, Japan. And um, he taught me to do around the world, and he taught me a move where you put your heel in front of the ball and the, your other foot behind it and you flip it up and hit it down yeah so he learned a bunch of different things some of it he's familiar but it all had a different flair so um but he learned a lot uh, a lot more than uh playing for one coach with an accent and that's all you're learning from, which is silly. But anyways, uh, here's Landon. Landon, tell us who you worked with and uh, what did you learn? My first person that I had was Kazoo, and he taught me how to wear your heels in front of the ball and your other, your big toe is in behind the ball, and then you hit it up, and it pops up, and then do it around the world. And he also, and then my second person was Johnny and he taught me how to do um, something that 90% of defenders can't can't defend it's where you act like you're gonna pass it to your player and then you drag it drag it to the other side and it works every time and he taught me how they juggle, well, juggle while looking at this other ball that he has to pass to you, and then you have to kick it back to him, and the Raladinho move. Awesome. So that that's so cool that they're, you know, and that was just tonight. They're going to be going through, tw- you know, they, did you guys work together? No, I worked with Nate. Oh, okay. So you guys kind of cycle through the. Uh, the players so um, they were in a similar um, area where they work with those uh, those players but uh, they'll work with those same players uh, next Wednesday Monday they have futsal game but uh, next Wednesday they'll be playing with them uh, learning more moves and and just keep learning moves they're going to learn from everybody 28 different players 28 different thoughts 28 different um, uh, variations of technique And it's so valuable. And where else are you getting that? Where else do you get it? Uh, Other than the streets. So communities, um, soccer communities, soccer uh, cultures that play in the streets, that's why they're so good because they're learning from other players. When I played, I learned more from players than coaches. I mean, when I was playing professional, I learned from players. They were showing, hey, do it this way, do it that way, uh, try this. And I learned so many things from players. And and that's how you learn. That's why it's very important to play on the streets, pickup games, versus where's your license, which is a travesty of how we're running things here. We're so concerned about where's his birth certificate? Is he legal to play? Where's the referee? All that garbage. Uh, that needs to be fixed. And we have that in the in the U.S. We have that in Arizona. It just it's just in it's in hidden areas. You know, you can go Oso Park and uh, get pickup games all the time, but you know it's it's not a place where 
you know, the kids go develop their game. So I'm trying to create that culture. I'm trying to get as much information into these young minds as possible. And they're just going to be so far advanced. And guess what? They don't have to pay 4000 bucks to get better. You don't have to leave the state of Arizona and go play in some showcase tournament to get better. You need to steal information as much as possible and showcase it in the community you live. And the rest will solve itself. So anyways, uh, I'd like to thank Jack and Landon for uh, being part of this podcast. And uh, hopefully you learn something from it. Steal information from players and coaches somewhat. But the players have it. They're the ones experiencing it. They're the ones that can uh, really teach the game. So anyways, thanks for joining us today. And hopefully uh, you stay tuned in because I have my uh, next segment is about Brazil women's national team how the u.s national team on the women's side beat brazil oh my gosh 4-1 and no one's talking about brazil and the uproar that's going on there and how many uh brazilian uh national team players refuse to play for their team they're playing against a jv team and they're still competing with them so anyways yeah congrats u.s you beat the jv brazil team yay congrats Wait till they get things organized and they start paying those girls more than $79 a day. You're in trouble. Goodbye. What? Oh. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app, free for iOS and Android.